Hi guys, welcome to our first maths lesson for this week. So we're carrying on with fractions. We've done really well with them and our live session on Friday, I really enjoyed. I could see how well you've understood finding equivalent fractions. So today we're going to be subtracting mixed numbers. So we need to remember a mixed number is a whole number and a fraction and a proper fraction at that. So that's what we need to be remembering today. So your task. Question one, convert these mixed numbers into improper fractions. Question two, convert these improper fractions to mixed numbers. Pause the video now to do this. Okay, how did we get on with that? So looking at question one, we've got five wholes and three fifths. So we can show this we know that one whole is five fifths in this occasion. So we need five lots of that. So five fifths times five will give us 25 fifths. So just to write, show this as a written out method, we're going to have five fifths is one, 10 fifths will be two, 15 fifths, is three, 20 fifths is four, and then 25 fifths is five. So that's how we get at to it. So it's just another way of multiplying it just by using repeated addition. So we've got the five holes converted into an improper fraction. We've still got the three fifths that we need to do something with. So we're going to add those on and we know how to add our fractions. We've practiced it last week and from what I've seen on tapestry and what I saw in school, you guys have got this perfectly. So we know because the denominators are the same, all I have to do is add the numerators together, which will give me 28 fifths. It's exactly the same method for three and eight ninths. The only difference is our denominator is nine and one whole in this occasion is nine ninths. So for this one, again, we've got three times, three lots of nine ninths. So again, we're using repeated addition to work this out. So I've got one whole is nine ninths, two holes is 18 ninths, three holes will be 27 ninths. So that's question one. But I haven't quite finished question one because I've missed a step. I need to add the eight ninths to 27 to give me my answer of 35 ninths. Now, converting improper fractions to mixed numbers. I did show you a way during our live session on Friday. I wonder if you remembered it and whether you used it or whether you used a different method because you find that works better for you. Whichever method you used, it's fine just so long as we get to the right answer at the end. So 102 over 10 equals 10 and 2 tenths, or we can simplify that to 10 and 1 fifth. Now, what we do know is I know that 10 times 10 makes 100. So if I'm using division to work this out, we can divide the denominator into the numerator. This works for improper fractions when you're trying to find uh, an equivalent fraction with mixed numbers. So my denominator is 10, my numerator is 102. I can't divide 10 into one. So I'm going to exchange up 10 into 10, I can do once, 10 into two, I can't do, that's a zero there and I have a remainder of two. So our 10 here is the whole that we have there, and the two, remainder two, is our two tenths. So if you've got 10 and two tenths, fantastic, well done. If you've simplified that to 10 and one fifth, even better. So again, 12, sorry, 124, over 12 is 10 and 4 twelfths, which that again can be simplified because I know 4 and 12 are in the 4 times table. 
So that is equivalent to 10 and one third. Now, if we're using our bus stop method again here, we have our denominator to divide. We have our numerator as the big number inside. I can't divide 12 into one. I can divide 12 into 12 and that goes in once. Four divided by 12, I can't do. That will be a zero and I have a remainder of four. So again, 10 holes is here. The remainder four goes over the denominator to give me my four twelfths. And then from there, I'm dividing both of those, the numerator and the denominator by four to get my equivalent fraction. So moving forward, seven fifths take away three tenths. So we've got an improper fraction to begin with. What we do need to do is make seven fifths into something over 10. So I've got my fifths here. I've got one bar full of fifths and the two fifths left over because I know seven fifths is one whole and two fifths. So I'm going to split my bar and make it into tenths. And I need to do that to both because I'm making seven fifths an equivalent fraction. So what I'm actually doing, I'm multiplying this fraction here by two to give me 14 tenths. Now my denominators are the same. I can complete my subtraction really easily. Let me just clear my notes. There we go. So we're multiplying by two to give us the 14 tenths. Now I just take three tenths off. I count up how many I've got left. I've got one full row for 10 and I've got one left in the remaining bar. So my answer is going to be 11 tenths or one and one tenth. Now I know for some of you, the bar model doesn't work too well. And I know for some of you, it does. This is all about what works for you. So if this doesn't work and you can do it using mathematics and multiplying and dividing, stick with it. Don't try and use this. If you struggle using your dividing and the bar model works better for you, carry on using it. OK, so we can also show this using a number line. So we've got seven fifths take away our three tenths. So we know one whole is five fifths. I know two holes is ten fifths. Seven fifths will go here. So I've got five fifths for one hole and I'm going to go on two more to get to seven. Because we're working in tenths, I need to divide or I need to multiply five by two, which gives each gap a split and makes it into a tenth. So our now equivalent fractions, 10 tenths is one whole. 20 tenths is two holes and seven fifths is equivalent to 14 tenths. So it will stay in the same place. We've just made it into an equivalent fraction. We've got three tenths all the way down here. So what we're going to do, we've got seven tenths to get us to our one hole and another four tenths to get us to our 14. So we're finding the difference this time. So seven tenths plus four tenths, we can do because we know from our addition last week where the denominators are the same, we just add the numerators and it gives us our 11 tenths or our one and one tenth. Okay, your turn now. Use the method that works for you. You might use the bar model, you might prefer using the number line or you might just prefer to use your maths skills. Have a think about how you would answer this one. Pause the video here. OK, how did we get on? Which method did you use? Whichever one you've used, the one that works for you is the one to stick with. So two and two thirds is going to go here. So we've got one hole, two holes, and then two thirds on from there. Now we need to make 
thirds into nine. So if we were doing this using our maths, we'd multiply two thirds by three. And it will become two and six ninths. Now our denominators are the same. We can work using the number line. So seven ninths is going to be down here. We have two ninths, which gets us to our first hole, plus one or nine ninths plus another six ninths. So we can add all of these together now. So two ninths plus six ninths. We know how to do that. We've done it with our using our mixed numbers and fractions that we did for our addition last week. So two add six gives us nine plus one. We've got one and eight ninths. Now I made a mistake there. I said two plus six was nine. It isn't. Two plus six is eight. So our answer is one and eight ninths. So before we move on, the other way of doing this particular question, I know that two holes is equivalent to six thirds. So I now need to make thirds into ninths, but before I do that, I need to add on my two thirds I have. So I now have eight thirds in total. My next step, I'm gonna multiply all of this by three. So I'm now going to have nine as my denominator, three eighths are 24. So my question now becomes 24 over nine, take away seven ninths. So we now do that. So that will give me 17 over nine. And now I can use my number knowledge. I know that nine goes into 17 once. So I have one hole and I know that nine add eight gets me 17, so I've got eight ninths there. So it's just a different way of working out the same problem. Now it's your turn. Take your time, follow the instructions that you're given. Question one's asking you to use bar models. Have a go with them. If they don't work for you, don't worry. Have a look at Dexter and Whitney's methods working out one and five sixths, take away a third, which way round, works best for you and then there's some practice question three working through some subtractions pause the video here okay you ready for your answers let's go through so using the bar models we've made equivalent fractions so all the bars are in eighths so we're taking away four eighths from 15 eighths so we've crossed out four and we've counted up the remaining one. So we've got one full bar and three eighths. Same procedure for the others. We're just making equivalent fractions and then subtracting them. Dexter and Whitney, which method did you prefer? A note or discuss it with someone that's with you. And then which method did you use to work out one and five eighths, take away three sixteenths? Now you might not have used the number line method. You might be much happier using your subtraction skills and your finding equivalent skills. That's absolutely fine. And then question three, check your answers here. Okay, let's move forward. So we have a reasoning question now. A race is three kilometers and two thirds of a kilometer in length. So we know that's how long the race is. Annie has run one sixth of a kilometer so far. How much further does she have to run? How could we go about working this out? Have a think. Pause the video here. What method did you think of? How are you going to work it out? I'm going to use bars in this instance. So I've got three and two thirds. I've got three full bars to show my three holes and I've got two thirds. 
Now, I need to convert these into sixths because that's what I'm taking away. So I'm going to do that. So remembering if I've multiplied three and two thirds by two, this whole is not going to change. That's not going to become six. That's going to stay the same. What I am going to change, make an equivalent, this will become three and four sixths. So I still have three full bars and I still have a partly filled bar. I just now have an equivalent. Two thirds is now an equivalent of one sixth or equivalent denominator for sixths. So all I need to do is take away one sixth and then I'm left with three and three sixths or three and a half. So I still have three full bars on the screen and I have half of the bar filled in. We can also use our subtraction, subtraction skills for working out missing numbers. Now, sometimes with our missing number questions, we have lots of different answers. So I'm going to show you one answer that we can get working this through. So we have five and something thirtieths take away a number of sixths leaves me with five and seven thirtieths. So I'm going to multiply my sixths by five, which will give me a fraction over 30. So I now need something I can take away from a number to leave me with seven. So I'm going to start off with 14. So I need to take away seven. That gives me my answer. Now, the problem is I can't divide seven by five. It doesn't work out for me because I need this to be an equivalent fraction of something over six. So that's not going to work. So let's work it the other way around. So I'm going to take away one sixth. So if I multiply that by five, it gives me five thirtieths. Now I've got my equivalent fraction that I'm taking away. I can use my math skills here. I can add seven and five, which will give me 12. So one possible answer I've got here is five and 12 thirtieths take away one sixth will give me five and seven thirtieths. Now, can you come up with a different method for working this one out? Pause here and have a go. OK, how did you get on this time? So the other way we could have done this, we could have had two sixths to take away. So if we do this, we'll work it through together. So I'm going to multiply this by five, which gives me a fraction over 30 and gives us 10. So I now need to do seven add 10 to give me what's going to go in the box over the 30. 10 add seven will give me 17. There's a few other ways you could have done this. So if you have done it a different way, please put it on your work and send it in through, through Tapestry. Another one for you here. Alex cycles for eight kilometers. Mo cycles for seven and five eighths of a kilometer. How much further does Alex cycle than Mo? Pause here and have a go at this one. Okay, how did we get on with this one? So we know Alex has cycled exactly eight kilometers. And we know Mo has cycled seven kilometers and five eighths of a kilometer. We've got three eighths of a kilometer as the difference. Now, we know that eight eighths in this case is equal to one. And we're only a little bit, so we've got more than seven, but we haven't quite got to eight. So we only need to add on a small bit. So rather than having to go through converting eight kilometers into something over eight, converting seven kilometers into a fraction over eight, 
adding the seven kilometer, the equivalent for seven kilometers and five eighths and subtracting it from the equivalent for eight holes. We can just look at the number and we can go, well, hang on, seven is one less than eight. And I've got five eighths and I know that eight eighths will make a hole which will make seven into eight. So I only need three more eights. So we don't always have to draw it out. We can use our knowledge of fractions to help us. So the answer is three eighths of a kilometer. Jack eats one and two fifths of a pie. Dora eats nine tenths of a pie less than Jack. So how much pie does Dora actually eat? Again, we can use a number line. So we've got our equivalent fractions. We're going to be working in tenths. So the first thing we'll need to do is make one and two fifths, one and something over 10. So to do that, we're going to multiply by two. So it becomes one and four tenths. So one and four tenths will go here on our number line. We're going to go back nine tenths, which leaves us with five tenths. So how much pie does Dora eat? She's eaten half of a pie. And again, we're working in remembering that we need to, if we're being asked for a unit of measurement, we need to put that in. So just before I move on, the other way of solving this is using our finding an equivalent and using our skills. So we know one whole is equal to 10 tenths, or in this case, 10 fifths, sorry, five fifths, because we are working in fifths to begin with. I'm gonna add on the two fifths that I've got. That gives me seven fifths in total. Now, Dora's eaten nine tenths, so I need to make seven fifths into an equivalent fraction. So I need to multiply it by two because that then means my denominator becomes 10 and I have 14 tenths. The question now becomes 14 tenths take away nine tenths leaves me with five tenths. And both of these are in the fives times table. And I know there's one five on the top, two fives on the bottom. So I get the same answer of half a pie. I've just used my math skills to do it. OK, have a go with these questions. See how you get on. Pause the video here. How did we get on with these? These are a little more complicated. You just need to be making sure you're using your math skills and finding those equivalent fractions and then answering the question. So question four, we've got the answer one and one third. So just to show you how we get to that answer, we've got one and three fifths of a litre of orange juice actually in the jug. Eva has poured out or taken away four fifteenths of a litre. So what we need to do, we're going to need to make our fraction something over 15. So to do that, I'm multiplying by three and that becomes nine fifths. Now my question is one and nine fifteenths, not fifths, my mistake. So remember, when you, you're finding your equivalents, you must make sure you multiply the denominator and the numerator. So one and nine fifteenths, and I'm taking away four fifteenths. So I know nine take away four equals five fifteenths. I haven't needed to take anything away from the one, so that will come over with me. So I have one and five fifteenths. I know five and 15 are in the five times table. I know five goes into five once and five goes into 15 three times. 
So if you've got one and five fifteenths, well done. If you've given it in its simplest form, one and one third, even better. Question five is about finding what works. So it's remembering that where I've multiplied by four to get my equivalent fractions, I need a number that's in the four times table so that when I go back to find the equivalent fraction of over five, it works out with an exact number. Dexter, Amir and Annie are taking part in a throwing competition. The answers are there on the screen. If there's any confusion about how to solve these, let me know through Teams. I'm more than happy to record you a short video to explain the answer to this question rather than making today's lesson longer. So if you've understood question six, fantastic, well done. If you haven't, let me know on Teams and I'll record you an extra short video just to take you through the working out for this one question. Take care, stay safe, and we'll see you back in class really, really soon.